Good day, everyone. Welcome to our latest episode of the Arena Conclave. I'm your host, Slappy McVee. We have a lot of stuff to go over, however, I will try to do my best to not make the time spent for you too long so you can get back to gaming. Our format today features gameplay footage captured by Qbert from our team being played on our latest build of our RetroPie fork on the Odroid XU4. A link to Qbert's channel will be provided in the description below. To start, I'd like to share that we are very excited to announce that over the coming weeks we will be transitioning to our new brand. As we are evolving and growing, it has become obvious to us that being strictly just Odroid Retro Arena is not conducive to the direction we are going anymore. You may be asking why that is and what exactly do I mean? We are pleased to say that we have been approached by Pine to put together builds of our fork to their hardware moving forward. This means that we are actually developing a build with them for the recently released Rock 64 Pro board based on the RK3399 chipset. We are not of course abandoning Odroid, however we are going multi-board and multi-vendor in our development process. We received several of our dev kits and have begun work in concert with Pine. If you haven't seen it yet, ETA Prime featured a video on the alpha build for a recall box on the board. Performance is in its infancy, however, it does appear to be very promising. We can't really say as of yet how it will perform and how it will stack up against other options. However, options of course are always welcome for the community at large. With this new development in mind, we are changing our brand to THE Retro Arena. <clears throat> and I apologize, I'm a little bit under the weather today, uh, got a lot going on with allergies, so. We've already begun the process, if you may not have noticed, as our YouTube channel is already branded as THE Retro Arena. We have been putting in the different things in place that we're going to need, such as a Facebook group, Discord server, website URL, etc., and are working on the back end for various bits and bobs to make the required adjustments. We're still working this all out logistically, so please be patient and bear with us while we do so. Discussing our RetroPie fork, we're working on a new base build for those that have not yet to download the one for our XU4. Those that are already have the build and are actively using it will be able to update in place for the most part and we will continue to do what we can to push our updates over the air. This being taken into consideration and after some team discussion, excuse me, we have decided that we'll be officially acknowledging that our fork deviates enough from RetroPie official that we will be rebranding our build moving forward as Thera or T-H-E-R-A for short. RetroPie itself is open source and we will continue to credit them for being where we started off from. However, as we are changing and evolving, especially with how the build is handled and it's being enough, we feel it makes more sense for a formal split. How does this impact the users you're possibly asking yourself right now? There are and will be various changes coming down the pike, with some of them being discussed today. However, we will not be doing things like yanking already implemented features right away, um, you know, doing things to break up the build, etc. Our goal is to make the best possible experience that we can, and that will not change. Our build has always been one that has worked to leverage the great work from RetroPie, Recallbox, Batacera, and even other non-Linux based distributions, which is another reason for this evolution. Just like our growth to become more than just Odroid Retro Arena, we'll be sharing more information in the future on this. Moving on to some of the items for the upcoming subversion release, I want to share part of the known changes at this point. We are swapping out 
to an in-house created media for the boot splash screen and launching media. We are working with one of our extended team members, Dave Marty, for implementing his launching videos feature, which if all goes well will be the default rather than static image files when you're launching games. You'll still be able to go with static files, which is one of the reasons why it'll take some work for us to modify scripting to make it easier for the community to move between the different functions. We are looking to enhance his original scripting, which I think will be a nice addition to the feature set. Lastly, we will be shifting the default theme to a new one from Will Allen. He's been working on putting together multiple themes for us that are able to take advantage of the extra horsepower under the hood of these more advanced boards. The plan will also be to add an additional ES themes repository, most likely, that will tie into Thera rather than RetroPie, so users will have a choice for now on which themes they can choose from still. That means that the ES themes repository that you're used to seeing will still be accessible, but we're going to give another option. We have plans to add a new system to the system carousel in the upcoming base and updates. I'm pretty excited about this one, and for now, until we're ready to preview it, I'll leave it under wraps. But I think that there will be many users out there that will not only benefit from it, but also really enjoy it. I can tell you that it is not another game system that is being emulated. So stay tuned for more information, hopefully soon. A pretty exciting and cool augmentation for us is a new affiliation with the developer for LR Recast. Due to the efforts of Galileo, we have provided, for now, an XU4 to Flying Head, the developer of LR Recast, and we'll be working to provide him with a dev kit for the R64P as well. We are hoping with this affiliation that we can work to make performance enhancements for the core that will further push the capabilities of the boards we currently support and will be supporting down the road to the best of their abilities. One of the updates we will be making is that we are removing Cody from being installed by default on our base image. We understand that this may be unpopular for some, however you will be able to install from the setup menu if you so choose for the foreseeable future. We will be modifying the scripting so that it will perform the install correctly from the menu as for us Cody is a standalone installation and has specific dependencies that are different than on the Raspberry Pi boards for example. Our choice to do this hasn't been a light one, however recently the United States government in a federal case against a Cody add-on developer has shown that Cody is very much in the limelight for all the wrong reasons. With this type of visibility, along with the attention that Cody has been garnering across the globe for its ability to enable video piracy, we wish to make the decision strictly up for the user on if they, they will be using the application, and they will be taking full responsibility for how they consume content on it. Well, that should do it for today. I really want to be able to get this video out and Due to a lot of other things, it's kind of been unfortunately placed on the back burner much longer than it should have been. One of the things I would like to say is that we try to give credit where it is due, and we hope that we do not miss anyone. However, we are only human. So there may be times where I, or we as a team, don't acknowledge everyone who has played a part in our success to this point. As always, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the growing community, our Patreon, commercial affiliates, emulator affiliates, and without a doubt, all those on the team that put so much time and effort into this hobby. For now, we hope that you're enjoying your retro gaming scene and wish you happy gaming.